Okay, so you were raised in Hinckley Township? I was born in Hinckley born Township, in uh, November 16, 1903, because that goes quite a ways back. And uh, a lot happened because times were so different then than they are now. And uh, they stayed that way, they were, the time. It just seemed to stay that way so long in my life mm -hmm. before I found I had to make more or less of change in my life and the way I live. How large a family did you come from? Since I left Hinkley. Do you have a lot of brothers and sisters? And I have two sisters, but they both passed on. And I had two brothers, but they have both passed on. And I'm the only one left. And I feel it quite, quite terribly because uh, uh, the people that I knew are all gone. Right. And I'm far away from them now. Did they all stay in the Hinkley area? Yes. And so when you say things were different, do you mean as far as um, uh, machines and, and, and mm -hmm. the farm life and, and, and that kind of oh, thing? Yes, yes. Uh, that was all... Uh, getting somewhere, you might say, out there. You were very busy, and it was a good place to to be, I think. But then I went on to Cleveland. I didn't stay in Hinkley. What age did you move to Cleveland? Well, I wanted to go to the Cleveland Institute of Music. I thought I wanted to. But when I, when I got there and, and saw what the tuition was, was going to be and everything, and I didn't have any money, and uh, I couldn't go to to it. I think I en enrolled. And I, I think I stayed about a month or two with it. And after I had been there that long, I found out I didn't care for the for the organization anymore. And then I was alone, making my living with my music, playing in bands and playing for lots of. Uh, wealthy people up on Cleveland Heights for social things, playing alone. I used to play alone quite a bit. Play piano? Mm -hmm. And it, it seems like that my life was so busy that I didn't have any time much to think about being myself and being happy. It seemed to not be the way it was because I, I had to work so hard to keep myself a boat boy. Right. Well, maybe you want to ask me another question. Um, were you raised on a farm then? Was your family farmed? Yeah, I was born and raised on a 60-acre farm in Hinkley Township. And uh, I was the fifth child. And uh, while I was going to high school, my one brother was still at home, but all the rest had left. I went, my, my one sister got married, and the other one went to Kent State to study. She wanted to be a teacher, and she did. And we were that type of people. And how, how did you meet Richard? I can't. How did you meet Richard Grayshaw? Richard Grayshaw. Richard Grayshaw, yeah. So I, I, I only know of him of late. Right. How did you meet him? I, I don't know if I can tell you that. <laughs> I, I was curious, I guess I can ask him, but I, I didn't know how you knew him. It's, I, I should remember. Probably through friends or something. Beg your pardon? Maybe through friends you knew. Yeah, yeah. He, he seemed to need my friendship, I think. I think probably he was maybe lonely. We were friends together. We still are, for all I know. Mm -hmm. he's, he's very interested in, in, in you, what's happening to you. Things come about and change our lives. You'll find at your tender age that you haven't heard anything yet as far as the, what your future will be. You don't know what that will be. If I had had parents or had somebody to talk to, to give me a, a good footing in ideas, you know, and, and uh, be able to communicate, but I never had that. And I needed it. I was a person that needed a little bit of help. It was pretty hard going all alone all the time. Once in a while, I needed to, needed help, and I didn't get it. What was the reason for that? Why didn't you get any help? Well, uh, music is a, 
very takes an awful lot out of you. And if you don't put in it what you have to put in it to bring it out, you might just as well forget it. And uh, I was very thin. I used to, I was quite a thin person. I, I, I didn't weigh a whole lot. And uh, sometimes music would get to be a little bit too much for me. And of course, the income from it, depending on it entirely, meant that you didn't have the same income every week or right. every month. You were, you were uh, sort of a ship without a rudder. <laughs> yeah, the mercy of, of, of how many engagements you would have and how much they were willing to pay. And that kind of thing. But I kept pretty happy through it. Did you feel you were different from other people? Is that part of it? Did you feel you were different but, than others? Is that part of your, the, the problem you had? You felt different than the other The difference people? in my net personality? Right. Yes, I think that entered into it because there wasn't anybody to talk to. And there were no psychiatrists yet. And uh, you, you had to just do the best you could. You might have been better off if there weren't any psychiatrists. Huh? You might have been better off if there weren't psychiatrists. And they may have messed you up more than you know, just doing it on your own. So did you did you so how did you how did you sort all of this out? How did you how did you make yourself comfortable with your life? I kept on with my music and uh, I didn't make a lot of money, but I was a person that managed pretty closely. I knew where her scent went and I and uh, I could take care of myself away from this home as far as that is concerned. But I would be alone still. And it's it sort of predominated upon me that I had better depend on some others for help, for a change. I came here to this home of late, thought that this would be a good place for me to be. But you don't need anybody here exactly that brings out happiness because the other people are in the same boat that you are in. Well, you, you live to pay for it. You have to pay for it to stay here. You get to the point where you make the best of it. Do the best you can. But I get lonesome in being alone all the time. There's a fellow here that I know that's friendly enough, and that has helped some. But he's had some troubles himself. People don't come to this home free of trouble. They... They, they come to this home to alleviate trouble. Do you have any special friends in Cleveland when you lived there? Well, I used to have different orchestra fellows, different ones that I played with that were friends, but not mostly in the sense of business, not so much in the, in the, in the sense of uh, really knowing them or they really knowing me. No, I've been quite a loner. I really have. Of course, you know that I'm gay. You know that. And that makes a tremendous lot of difference. Has that caused problems for you? Has it had been a problem? Off and on, yes. And back there, nobody to talk to. Nobody to listen to you. It wasn't accepted. Did you have problems with your family because of that? Did your family have problems with that? No, my family, I was away from my family. Away. See, I was the fifth child, and I came along last, and I was a loner. My, my dad was up in years. I stayed on the farm a while with him after my mother died, and then my, my, my two sisters were both married. They were married. And were you always alone, or did you have anybody with you? No, I, I was always alone most of the time. You never had a lover of any sort, or a, a spouse another, or a lover. Another of person? Right. No, I can't say as I did. If I did, I inhibited it. You pre I, did you prefer to be alone? Did you want to be alone? No, but just the, worked out the social, the social uh, thing that you need to know people in a month it wasn't there. You mean in yourself or in society there wasn't any way? Society. It wasn't a way to meet people. That's right. It, it wasn't... As, outspoken as it was today. Today it's outspoken. Nobody thinks anything about it. Especially of late, too. It's been Very nice. over the radio so much yes. and over the television. Even in Cleveland there was no 
Um, no television yet. But I mean, there was no way to meet people in Cleveland? Only through the orchestra world. Oh. Where the men that I played with. That, that, that was how I went. And I stayed there in Cleveland in rooms and boarded with an aunt, an elderly aunt. And she took me in and uh, I studied at the Cleveland Institute of Music to begin with, but I didn't like it. I didn't like the method there, and I, I didn't stay with it. I think I paid the $90 tuition to, to get in, and then I left it because it wasn't, it was too pedagogical and too European to suit me. I couldn't quite cope with that because I was an American, you know, and I needed what Americans do. But I did an awful lot of playing in dance bands at different times, and that's what kept me going. Where were you during the, uh, the wars, the First World War, for instance? Were you in Cleveland? Gee, I can't even tell you that. You didn't serve in any, in any no, wars? No, I, I was always a little too young or too old to get into the service. So you stayed in Cleveland for how long? How long were you in Cleveland? It's awful hard to say. Or where did you go after that, after Cleveland? I think I was, I had, had a studio and I was teaching piano. In Cleveland? Yeah. Yeah, I, I had I had a studio for a while, and I taught. Did you have a lot of students? Well, quite a few. It was to make it worthwhile. No, I I have lived alone most of my life. I didn't marry, and I've been alone. It, it had its drawbacks, especially as you grow older. Mm. You must have nephews, nieces, you know, other relatives. Yeah, there's other relatives, but they didn't contribute anything to my music. They're just, uh, I didn't go to visit them, or they didn't come to visit me. Yeah, there were relatives, but I was the fifth child in the family, and uh, by the time I came along, there wasn't much left, because my mother had passed away, and she was a nurse, a trained nurse. I missed her terribly when she died, and... Well, my mother was the the go-getter of our family. My father was just a farmer on a 60-acre farm there where we lived in Granger Township. We lived in Hinckley, and then we moved in, into Granger Township, which is just south. My dad farmed there for several years in Granger Township, and I used to go home to see him. My mother passed away, and I used to go home to see him once in a while. He had it pretty hard, and he lived to be an old man. He just died just practically recently. He lived to be a really old man, and very healthy right up to the last. So you went where after Cleveland? Then? Did you move back to Hinkley then, after Cleveland? Well, no. When I, when I got up to Cleveland, I, I stayed there. I stayed there with an aunt. Right, but then after that, you went to where? I don't know if I can just tell you. And I left there. Did you come back to Hinkley though and start your nursery then? I don't think so. No, someplace in between. I might have for a little while, but not to, not to speak of. No, as time went on, I, I seemed to be able to make my way with my friends. Did you used to go to Florida in the winter? No, yeah. I never been to Florida. Where did, did you stay at Hinkley all year round? Practically, all during that formative period. Yes. I stayed on the farm for till I was about, or till I was about uh, 16, 17 years old. I stayed stayed on the farm with my dad. My mother had gone, of course, she was dead. Now, was your was your nursery on the property that your father had owned? Uh, no, that all came much later. That much that came much later. So you purchased some ground. Yes, I enjoyed that very much. Something take, it took its place, and, and I guess change is what we expect. Lots of change comes to all of us, and sometimes it's hard to make the change. Were you religious? Are you? Are, did you go to church? Did you have a church? You no, went I to? never was very religious. No. no. Was your family? No. 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 So it wasn't. No, there were no ministers in our family or anybody that went to church a great deal. Not even my two oldest sisters. They're both gone now. And I'm the only one left 
in the whole family now. Where's your family from originally, the Sylvesters? Are they from? Well, from, from uh, the old, old relation's name was Sykes. That's an English word. And I remember my great aunt Lucy as a child. So we came the very beginning, at the very beginning, we, we came from Hinckley. That's where the settlement was. And of course, Hinckley is a beautiful township. It has the lake, you know. Mm -hmm. You've seen it, have you? No, but I think I've seen it on the map. I've mm -hmm. never been there. So it's very beautiful. I've heard of the buzzards. It's all hill, yeah. It's all hills. There's lots of hills in it. Some of it's level, but a lot of the territory in Hinckley is hilly, very hilly. You mentioned a library one time to me, in a letter. Well, yeah, well, the Sylvester Library was given by my great uncle, Frank Sylvester, um, years ago. That was given way back, I think, the year of 1903, the year I was born. That library was built. Now, is that in Hinckley? Uh, Medina. It's in Medina. Medina. And he was, my Uncle Frank was very much a go-getter. He was very, quite wealthy. And he did deal, dealt in the thoroughbred cattle. Oh. He made an awful lot of money. And he gave Medina their library. Have you ever seen it? No. It was quite pretty. It's made of red brick. And it, it, it's right on the corner of up the town square. It's right on one of the corners. And they keep it landscaped beautifully. Then they found out that it wasn't big enough. So they built on to the south end of it quite a big new building to take care of it. Because they got to the point where it wasn't large enough. And that, I remember that took quite a lot of money to build it. Oh, yeah. Is, did you go a lot to the library then as a child? Oh, yeah. I always was a bookworm. I was always reading everything I could get my hands on. And I think that helped me, and uh, since I wasn't oriented toward marriage, I think the reading helped me in that matter a great deal, because I considered how other people live. And I used to compare myself with other people. I found out that I, there was not very many people like me, because uh, they couldn't live such a sedentary life as I lived. But they'd have to either be married or doing something social, you know. What did you do for fun? Did you have? Did you go out and have fun? Did you do things in Cleveland or? Did I for recreation? Yeah. No, I always sort of. I never thought of it that way. When you're in a big city and you're all alone, although I stayed with an aunt there that lived in Cleveland at the time, it's quite a it's. it's quite an uphill job for a person that's alone. You know, I had to be careful with what money I made, but I, I, I didn't, I, I worked hard, but I didn't disenjoy my life. I, I rather enjoyed my life. I was so busy, I didn't have any time for anything much that other people would figure necessary. I, I got along real good. It was hard, it was an uphill grind, but it was hard, and I made it, I made it, I made it all right. And I got, so after a while, with the work that I did, and all I saved what money I was making, I'm glad I did, because it helps out here. Why did you um, start a nursery? You were in music, and then you switched to a nursery. Love flowers. Just couldn't get enough of them. Just crazy about flowers. There was a greenhouse under glass called Hammerschmidt and Clark in Medina, and uh, through marriage, I was relation to both of them. The blood was that way, and uh, I used to go there an awful lot. And sometimes I'd, I'd help them, I'd give them a hand. They raised everything, potted plants, beautiful. That, uh, I don't know whether that greenhouse is operating or not. It's right in the center of Medina, it's right in the city. Mm. Things have changed terribly. Think for the worse? You know, in all ways, oh. things have changed. Everything is so much more bigger, so much expanded. Do you dislike that? Maybe part Do you like that? Well, it isn't a case of liking it as much as it is. You can't help yourself. Everybody, that's so everybody had an automobile, you know. 
I don't know how people today make enough money sometimes to make a living and have to keep up with what the expenses. It's hard. I would think so. Things are very expensive. Yes. Maybe I come along about the right time to be able to not suffer from that too much. But I feel sorry for you because I know I know you're young and you've got your whole life before you and you're doing the best you can. Do you find it uh, difficult at times? You mean money-wise? Yes. 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 Things are very expensive. I don't make very much money. It's, things, it's hard. Everybody wants, everybody wants a lot of things, yeah. and it's very hard to and not the, have things. The prices are jacked up so high, too. It seems like an obsession with them, with that prices today, going up like, like it is. Well, I, I wondered about you, and I'm only too glad to have you come, because I didn't have a chance to ever before to talk with anybody like this. And I've left out, of course, a lot that I've done. I can't cover it all. Is there anything else real important that you think we should talk about? Well, it probably is, but it just doesn't come to mind. Did you Did you ever feel guilty about the way you felt about pe about that other people? Did I ever what? feel guilty? Any no. bad feelings about the way you were? Uh, um, early in the early adolescent days, yes. When I was an adolescent, because uh, I I didn't uh, I didn't date like the other boys did. I didn't feel like dating girls. Girls are all right. I got along with them okay. I never cared to date one of them, so I was free from that. Did that trouble you? Did that trouble you? Bother you that you didn't want to date girls? Did that? No, no. He never entered into it. He never he never cared. My dad was a man that wouldn't care much about that. He wouldn't speak about it even. But did you care? Did you worry about it? Uh, only in as much as, uh, you see, my homosexuality is so much a part of me that uh, it engulfs me in that question that you asked. It engulfs me in it. But the homosexual won out. It was the strongest. And, of course, with it went the hardship of being homosexual. But I was willing to put up with that because I didn't want the other. So you accepted it? It was just as natural for me to be the way I am as for anybody else to be the way they are. And I had to handle it this way I could. I went to a psychiatrist, and uh, it, when it, a psychiatrist in those days, or a general MD doctor, they hadn't accepted homosexuality. And all of them prone to say, you need a woman. They were very prone to keep saying that to me. So I didn't get anywhere with them at all. They helped, didn't help me a bit. I was the youngest, as, as I say, of five children, and I had a sister working at the, in the office at the B.F. Goodrich River Company in Akron, and I went to see her through vacation. I'd go and stay two weeks with her where she roomed and boarded. That used to help me out just to get to go to something like that. It was something different, you know. And she knew I needed it. That was the great thing about it. She knew that I needed that. Did, did you know any other men that were gay? Did you, did you know anyone that was gay besides yourself? Did you? Uh, yes, I knew a fellow when I was gay at the Clean Institute of Music when I was studying piano there. His name was Lauren Maddox, and he, he was from Shelby, Ohio. And... Uh, we became acquainted with each other, one another, but had a completely different disposition. We weren't alike at all. And uh, we were just friends. We, oh, I'd call up on the telephone at my aunt's there and them and tell me to come down and go to the show with him. We'd go to a movie. But I didn't have anybody what you'd call real close while I, all the while I was in Cleveland. Because... Uh, Homosexuality was issued by then. You didn't talk about it. You didn't dare talk about it at all. You just had to buck it through the best way you could. What about later? Later on? When you... Well, later it got so you, you could talk about it. It was quite common because so many people went to the doctor to see if they could get help. And as they more and more kept going, you know, so it kept it, kept it going. Was there a particular doctor that you went to? Well, I, I had a, 
a psychiatrist in Cleveland, and then I had what you might call our family doctor, and uh, I never even had a aunt, never even brought the subject up with one of them, but they invited me out for a Sunday dinner, and I used to have a Model T Ford car, and I drove out to their house and ate dinner with them on Sunday. And he looked across the table at me, and he says, when are you going to get married? Well, of course, it showed that he had no idea at all about my trouble, and uh, I just laughed it all. He said, a nice young man like you, he said, you ought to be married by now. And that's the way they used to talk in those days. Did you know people then later on? Did you meet other gay people uh, later years? Kind of few, far between. I didn't go out for it. And uh, I didn't go to any of the gay bars. I think I went to the gay bar once in Cleveland. There's quite a bit of that today, isn't there? Yes, very it's much. Very popular. Very much. Yeah. I think is a big difference. And that that's very much the center of, of life yes. now. Yes. Whereas it doesn't sound like that that existed much uh, when you were younger. Entirely different. Well, thank heaven it is, because when it's out in the open, that's better, because everybody knows where they stand. Do you, uh, you're still in school, are you? Yes. What college? Ohio State. Ohio State. You live in Columbus? Yes. You like it there? It's okay. I'm from a very small town. and oh, you're, you're outside of the town? Well, I was raised in a small oh, town. Right. I was born in a small town. Now I live in Columbus. It's very large. Very large. Yeah. Uh, as big as Cleveland. Yeah. Now. And, uh, Tremendous the way it's I, I miss the farm. I miss fresh air and, and yeah. the animals and yeah. plants and things like that. It's hard. It's different. I live in a very small place. Uh, lots of houses, lots of people. Very busy street. Noisy place. So I don't like it. I want to get back out to the country. Are you alone? Uh, I have a roommate. Oh, is there do you have enough in common to, to get along? Yes, we get along mm -hmm. very well. We like plants. We like plants a lot. We have a dog. Well, I loved them too, and I had my period with them. I made money with my plants. It wasn't a, it wasn't non-profitable. I, I made money with my plants. Sold quite a few. Did you have special things you grew there? Perennials. I enjoyed more variety of plants. There's so many things here that they could have that, that are nice, but they aren't thinking plant-wise here. I have irises. Irises is my favorite. Yeah, peonies and iris are both. And lilies. I like lilies oh, a lot. Oh, do I? I do, too. I, do too. I believe I specialized in lilies. They're so worthwhile. With beautiful, pure blooms. Scent, odor. Mm, yes. And they last a long time. Yeah. Of course, irises smell nice, too. I like the iris smell. Well, peonies go with us. Yes. Peonies tend to flop over too much for me. Can't yeah. keep them standing yeah. up. Rain, especially yes. after a rain. Yeah. I don't, they're nice, but I, 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 when they flop over, there gets too much yeah. mess. They have standards that you can buy to put under them. Yeah. Wire. Yeah. Well, getting back to here, there's a fellow here that uh, he is, I don't think he's gay. I never talked with him about it. But we hit it off together to a certain extent. He's been kind of sick. He hasn't been very well. He's one of the people here. Is this the first time you've seen the place? Yes. What do you think of it? It's pretty. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. But, you know. It's old fashioned. It's yes. antique. People seem friendly. Mm -hmm. People seem friendly here. Yeah, pretty, pretty much so. Although there's a business crops out every once in a while. Uh, the business end of it. I have a fellow that, uh, his name is Mr. Brendel, and uh, I've known him quite a while, and he sort of took over to help me out here to to make things happy for me, and uh, he's, uh, he, he's a nice guy, and he has, he has helped me quite a bit. I can talk with him and, exchange thoughts and I hope I have been able to help you. It's been very interesting. Well then uh, you're, you majored in what? English. Are you going to teach it? I have oh, a yes. little but I not anymore. You don't um, think you will, huh? No, I'm not a very good teacher. 
I don't have the patience to teach. I'm not sure what I'll do yet. Like you said, I you don't know what your future is going to be. You don't know what what will happen, what what turn of events will come along. I like to know how things were before because I don't like things the way they are very much right now. But I can't change them. No. But I think it's good to know how people lived and what they thought about before <laughs> things are the way they are. Well, I give you a pretty good uh, idea of what it was like back there. Mm -hmm. You see, I had this great uncle. It was my father's uncle. It was my great uncle. And he made his money in thoroughbred cattle. And he lived in Granger Township. Have you heard of Granger yes. Township? He was a herdsman, a cattleman. And he, but he made a lot of money. An awful lot of money. And he gave my father which would be his nephew, his farm, oh. gave it to him as a present, 60-acre farm. But my dad was, I don't know, I look back at it, and he wasn't very strong physically. And I sometimes wondered how he did the hard work that he did back in those days. But that was all, of, all they did then was farming, farming, farming. Everything was farming. You just took it for granted. Did you use horses to farm? Did you have horses to farm with? Oh, yeah. The hard way. Yeah. Yeah. No tractors yet. Yeah. My, he used to work hard. He wasn't a real strong man either. Then my mother come along, and she was a trained nurse. And she went out on nursing cases. Oh, most every woman that had a baby had to have Lizzie Sylvester come to, to free her from it. Mm. And... My mother made quite a bit of money that way. But most of it, it seems, was when by the time I came along, my mother wasn't long to live. So the rest had more than I did, because I came along so late, the fifth child. And I used to just break my heart to see her go to nurse, you know, and not stay home. Right. I think that had a lot to do with my emotional makeup. It wasn't natural for me to, I loved her, and it wasn't natural for me to have her go away so much <clears throat> and work for other people. But uh, she said that my father didn't make enough money on the farm to support us five kids. So she had to go out to do it. But a, a woman, a children need their mother. Right up to beyond 12 years of age, they still need their mother. And I, I didn't, I lost her along the way. I was thrown out on my own. I, let's put it that way. Where did you learn to play piano? How did you learn? To well, play? we had an old upright piano in the home <coughs> where we lived, and uh, there, that was the time when player pianos came in, and were all everybody wanted a player piano. Where I'd watch the keys go down by running it slow, pedaling it slow. Of course, you had disrupt the tone, the key tone. But I'd watch the keys go down, and then I'd copy that. Oh. You see, any old way in the storm, I guess. And I'd, I'd write down the combinations that I'd see, and then I'd put my hand on the piano and make the same sound that I got from the piano. And I I, I didn't have a teacher. You taught yourself. I, I, I had what you might have called a teacher, but she wasn't a real teacher once when I was old. Oh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve years old. I learned to play the piano through watching the player piano. I learned a lot about it that way, that you couldn't have gotten unless a, 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 a teacher would have written a chord book so you could get your chords out of the book. Well, that might interest you, too. I saw a great need for that. And lo and behold, I took it upon myself to contact the Zimmerman Company in Cincinnati and... Uh, Asked them if they would print these manuscripts that I had. I had each key on the piano, major, minor, augmented, seventh, and diminished, to have each one of those published. And they did it for me. They published it for me. And then I was able to, it, it was in a green book. I wish I had a cover here. I carelessly lost those, what I had left. But it was in a green cover with my picture on it. Oh. And uh, it told all about how to play the left hand and the right hand in connection too. But I, 
I wasn't too particular, and I lost it. I lost the copies of that. Did you sell those to people? Did you yes, I did. Dollar and a half a book, and then I taught. I taught, taught what I sold, and then I had. Funny part of it is, uh, the people that got the copies of the book were they were precious to them, and uh, the first thing I knew, there was people calling for my books to get all the books. You know, we could. I I I had quite a few made up had had quite a few made up from Zimmerman in Columbus. Well, you've heard of Zimmerman, maybe. I think I have. Mm -hmm. They're book publishers. Well, I got along real good, good, good with it. It sold real good. It sold real good. Why did you stop teaching music? Why did I stop with music? I taught a lot. I had a lot of experience with it. And it sort of died out naturally with me. Too much responsibility with it, and so well, I, I had saved my money, and I had some money to lay back on. Of course, being alone, I had no way of spending my money like lots of people do. They get rid of their money as they make it. I didn't. I always was a great saver, and I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't hadn't saved some money. I worked hard to save my money, and I ended up here, and here's where I will end up. I suppose, and unless I'm, I'm pretty well up in years, I seem to have pretty good health yet. So, did you sell your nursery? Did you sell your nursery to someone? Did you sell the nursery to someone? I sold it. Yes. Yeah. Are they still running it as a nursery? What? Are they running it as a nursery? Uh, let's see. No. For the most part, the person that wanted it so bad lived near me, and. But he didn't buy it for the flowers. His wife liked the flowers that I used to take her. Uh, but he wanted the property for some reason or other. And there was a there was probably an acre and a half in it, and uh, it backed up into a woods, and uh, it was kind of a hill, hilly. And he wanted it so bad, and I I held off. But I finally sold it to him, and uh, he bought it, and. They've been awfully good friends to me. They lived right near me there. They were people from the city, I think, but uh, countryside in a great deal of their way. I went to the uh, Mrs. BB, the PFLG meeting, Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. Oh. I've been to their meeting several times because there's a woman in Akron on the east side of Akron. East Market Street, by the name of Ann Beebe, I don't know her. and she she took interest in me, and she has been a very very fine friend for a long time. The last uh, thing we went to was was in South Akron. Mister and Mrs. Well, the people that that I know picked me up and took me there to that meeting. Privish is their name, Mr. and Mrs. Privish, and uh, they like me, and I like them, and they've come here to visit with me so as to take some of the worry off my mind and sit in those chairs and talk. And it's a good thing I have them because uh, they speak of the same things we have in common. But the meeting was nice, and they had a banquet, they had a meal, and it was just packed with people and. Uh, Lots of them were gay. Many, many of them were gay. How did you meet them? What? How did you meet them? These people. PFLG, Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. You may have contacted them. You may have. What's that? You may have contacted them. You may have. You have, what? You may have written to them or, or called them. To the Mr. and Mrs. Privish. Mm. Oh yes, they're still my friends. The same since. In fact, they came here the last time they went and picked me up from the hospital. From here, from here, they picked me up from here and brought me back. They sound like really nice people. Yes, that was a nice meeting. It was very, very well handled. Very, very well handled. Do you think you'll go again? Well, I could. Uh, I, I, if I, if they have a meeting, I, Mrs. Beebe usually tells me if there's a meeting going on. She's been a great friend. She lives in East Akron, mm -hmm. and uh, is that far from here? Is that far away from here, Akron? Yeah, quite a ways. Is it? 
Yes, it's quite a quite a drive. That was happened just recently, more or less recently. This this uh, supper they had and this meeting, and they came and picked me up from here. Oh, I seem to be pushed off north from the rest of you. I seem to be pushed so far north, which I don't like. You uh, do you find that uh, Columbus is very active? With homosexuality, it is. It is. It's kind of conservative, but it it's better. It's better and all better than it was. Yes, yes. Well, it, it come out now. Yes, I think I think Cleveland is more open, more liberal. I think so. Than before, and Cincinnati's is not very good. It's Cincinnati's very conservative. Straight laced. Yes. Well, it's too bad because the. The trend is toward coming out. Yes. That's the trend. Well, I'm glad you came. I'm glad we got to meet each other, finally. Yes. Uh, it was quite a drive, wasn't it? Yeah, it takes about three hours. Oh, for heaven's sakes. How many miles away is it? Do you have any idea? Well, that's all right. A hundred, maybe? Oh, my. Uh, probably is. About a hundred. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, gee, I thank you for coming. Well, I'm, I'm glad you would talk to me. And it wasn't so bad driving. We stopped in Mansfield on the way, and that was nice on the way up. Not a real nice day out, but it's 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 not. Do you know anybody in Mansfield? No, no, you didn't know anybody. Well, I I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your coming. I thank you too, because I'm sincere about that. Oh. That has probably been uh, one of my weak points. I haven't been able to have been so far away from you, mm -hmm. you know. Yes, but. Uh, the way things worked out with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Privish taking me, they took me two or three times. And uh, they always had a banquet like Eats. And they enjoyed it because there's other parents there too, lots of other parents. And that was held south, in South Akron at uh, a big church basement. I forget the denomination. But uh, they let out their basement. And there was a big crowd, big crowd there. That's good. And we had a speaker who spoke on homosexuality for an awful long time that night. He he spoke about it. So it's open. It's wide open now. We don't have to keep our mouths shut about it as much as we did. Did you ever have any problems, any trouble with, with that issue? Did you ever get in trouble or did you ever no, get afraid? I, I, with another fellow. Uh, yeah. No, because I was always timid. I wouldn't bring up the subject. Mm. And so whoever I was with, I would be safe with either hetero or homo. I'd be safe with them. You kind of, back in those days, you had to be kind of careful who you told about it. Now it isn't as bad. Nowhere near as bad. Did you what? know of people that got into trouble? What? Did you know of people that got into trouble, into problems? Uh, no. Kent says it did. But you knew not to talk about it. Yeah. It was no, dangerous. Well, if we could only see each other again, you know, if we could see each other to talk with per periodically. I'll try to come up again. It'd be fine. Good, good. Well, I think I'm going to go. I think it's, so probably, it's getting dark. I think I'm going to yeah. go. Well, let's see now. Uh, parents and friends of lesbians and gays, I made my will, and I'm giving everything to them because I think that's a good good place to put it. It is. it is. I don't think they'll break up very soon. Parents, PFLG, they call themselves. And Mrs. Beebe's very active in it. And she's been an excellent friend. She accepts me. and It's a very good group. I've heard of that group. It's very good. You've heard of Mrs. Beebe? No, I've not heard of her, but I've heard of the group. The oh, PL... Yeah, PFLG. PFLG. Yeah. They must have a meeting in Columbus. Um... It's very small there, not very organized. Not very out. No, out like, no, not very, very small. I think it's more organized up here in the north than there. So it's better here that mm -hmm. way. Well, they teach you that that's good. That's a good thing to have. Yes, it is. Gives people a chance to get together and discuss. Well, you'll have a long drive home. Yeah. You won't probably stop on the way. Uh, probably someplace. Oh. Stop along.